Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the Inventor 2040W. So the Inventor 2040W is for you budding Da Vinci's out there. It's an all-in-one board for making battery power contraptions that can move and optionally make noise and even talk to the internet. This is my favourite board. <laughs> Not biased at all. So the Inventor 2040 is a multi-talented board that does almost everything that you can think of. It may be a robot, a prop or other mechanical thing. Drive a couple of motors with encoders on board? Sure. Add up to six servos? Yep, and attach a little speaker to make some noise, no problem. It's also got a little battery connector so you can power your inventions from an AA or AAA batteries or even a LiPo battery. My favourite little battery is these Gallium batteries, also from Pimeroni. They also have that connector on to connect to the Inventor 2040W. And that means you can make your miniature automations, animated top hat or treasure chest growl <laughs> at the enemies around you untethered. You can also get a ton of other options for hooking up sensors and other gubbins. There's two Quest connectors on board, which means you can connect all kinds of extra sensors. And there's also an unpopulated breakout garden connector as well. And that means you can attach all kinds of extra breakouts. There's three ADC pins for analog sensors. There's photo resistors and such, and three spare digital GPIO pins that you can use for LEDs, buttons or digital sensors. And speaking of LEDs, we've also managed to cram in 12 individually addressable RGB LEDs, aka NeoPixels, one for each servo and one for each GPIO slash ADC, or you could just make rainbows if that's what you want. We'll call that too. So best of all, the brains of the outfit is the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is on board the board. That means you've got that 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity. Use it to trigger your mechanical friends and also make a robotic bird that tweets and tweets. That sounds familiar. Feature wise, it's absolutely jam packed. So it has the Pico W aboard, which is fantastic in itself. We have the two JST SH connectors, which are the six pin connectors for attaching motors. We have a speaker connector. We have the JST PH battery connector, which is great for that untethered battery powered robots and stuff. We have the six servo header pins, which means you can attach up to six uh, hobby servos on there. There's an additional six header pins for other GPIO usage. 12 RGB LED pixels. There's a use button and a reset button making this really uh, customizable. And there is also two Quest connectors for attaching additional breakouts as well. It comes fully assembled, so you're ready to go out of the box. Feature wise, let's have a more detailed look at this. So the Raspberry Pi Pico W board is a dual ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz with 264K of onboard SRAM. It also has an additional two megs of QSPI flash, which supports XIP and it's powered and programmable by the USB micro B connector. It has 2.4 gigahertz wireless and it has the two JST SH connectors, which are the six pin uh, encoder motor connectors for attaching motors. It has a dual H bridge motor driver, the DRV8833, and it has per motor current limiting 425 milliamps and it has per motor indicator LEDs as well. So you can even see which direction the motors are turning in just by looking at the LEDs. It has a two pin Pico blade compatible connector for attaching a speaker which is really cool because it means our inventions can now make sound and it has the JSTPH which is the two pin connector for attaching a battery as well and the input voltage is between 2.5 and 5.5 volts. The six sets of header pins for connecting the three pin hobby servos and there's another six set of header pins for, for GPL usage three sets of which are ADC compatible. There are 12 individually addressable RGB LEDs slash NeoPixels. There's the user button, the reset button, Button, and there's two quest connectors for connecting additional sensors as well. There's an unpopulated header for the breakout garden slot so you can even put breakout gardens in. We'll have a look at one of those in a minute on the demo and it comes fully assembled which is amazing if you're not great at soldering like me. So no soldering required and it's backed by the C++ and MicroPython batteries included uh, libraries so you can get started really really quickly and there's even a schematic as well so you know where all the mounting points are and so on. Software wise, it has the batteries included pirate brand MicroPython and that's best for people who are new to programming and want to get started quickly, but you'll get the best performance using our C++ libraries. So we recommend the batteries included MicroPython for ease of getting started. 
Connecting breakout wise couldn't be easier. So this comes with the Quest connector and that's the Quick or Stemma QT breakouts. They both use the same connector. And if your breakout has a Quest connector on it, you can simply just connect it in with a JSTSH to JSTSH cable. And if you haven't got the JSTSH cable, it's not easy to say, you can get the uh, breakout garden to JSTSH cable converter as well. We sell those in the store. So there's a list of breakouts that are currently compatible with this with our C++ and MicroPython libraries. Just check in the store for links to that as well. A couple of things to note. So measurement wise, it's 52 millimeters by 66 by 12 millimeters. And there are mounting holes, which are M2.5, the same as the Raspberry Pi use, and 2.7 millimeters from each edge. And the direction indicators on the motors can actually be cut. You just need to score across the little circuit board track for that. And if you need to put them back, you just need to solder a little bridge across to there. Then the battery voltage range is dependent on what function you're using. So the minimum voltage in our testing was the motor driver stops at about 2.9 volts. The audio stops at about 2.2 volts, which is really low, and the Pico stops anything below 1.9 volts. So the maximum battery voltage is 5.5, though we have powered from 5.6, meaning the rechargeable NIMH batteries, 4AA batteries, can be used as well. You can have a battery and a USB connected at the same time safely. The board will use whichever power supply has the source at the higher voltage, which is usually USB. So the Pico board, things to note about this. So we have a range of products which use the Raspberry Pi Pico board, and that means it comes built in. So you don't have to buy an additional one. It's sold straight onto the board. This means you get all the advantages of the RP2040 processor, which is a speedy, fast dual core ARM processor, a dynamic growing ecosystem, and a choice of programming languages to use and experiment with. And most excitingly, the Pico W comes with wireless connectivity, meaning you can communicate with other devices and also to get data from the internet. While this is pretty new to the Pico. The Pico W isn't actually that old, so be aware that some things will change in the software environment. In fact, there's been quite a few improvements since the launch of the Pico W, such as Bluetooth connectivity as well. So if you're an absolute beginner, you might want to wait till the Wi-Fi stuff has settled down uh, and, is, and there is a lot more tutorials out there, which there probably is now, to be fair. Okay, should we have a bit of a demo and look at some of the code? Okay, let's get to the captain's table and have a look at this, shall we? Okay, so I've got over here uh, Thonny, and what I'm going to do is just load up a couple of the examples and have a play with these. So what I've done as well, I've got the... Uh, the board here. I've actually built a little robot. I call this the Smars Inventor. And uh, this has got like a LiPo battery in there. It's got a little laser rangefinder using the breakout garden connector there. I've also connected up a Mi Arm using the four servo headers here. So there's two spare. And I've also connected up a little speaker on there so we can play some sound as well. The motors are connected up so that there is uh, two motors connected so that this robot can move backwards and forwards. And I've got some code loaded on there as well so it can even host a web page and give us some feedback in real time using this little distance sensor that I've connected in. So that's like an additional breakout garden connector. So let's start off with um, just using some of the examples. So I'm over here in the uh, the Pimroni library. So if we go to the Inventor 2040W page on the Pimroni website, uh, then we can scroll down and then we can look at the uh, the software. So it's a C++ MicroPython libraries. And if you click on that, it'll take to the GitHub repository where you can download this code and then you can sort of play along with me. So I've downloaded this already and I'm going to look at some of the first things like the LED rainbow. So if I press this and let's turn down the studio lights on here so we can actually see what's going on. We can see there that we have uh, some really nice RGB LEDs just cycling through different colors there. So that's a nice test of the 12 uh, individually addressable RGD LED pixels. Next, let's have a look at, uh, we're going to read the encoders. So if I run this one and I start turning some of these wheels, you can see there, if I just bring this up a little bit, I'm turning the right wheel. And as I turn this round, you can see there that the uh, on the right hand side and the console down here, that the values are actually changing. If I turn that all the way back round, you can see now it's like a negative value. Similarly, if I do that on the other side, let's try that on the left wheel, you can also see that we're, we're reading the values back from the encoders. So that's pretty cool. Let's stop that. Let's have a play with servos next. So I'm gonna load up the, uh, the servo wave program. So that's this one here. And if I just stop that and then run this, then our MIAM, which is connected to these, uh, these servos, is gonna start coming to life. So just need to hold, hold on to this. So you can see there that the Inventor 2040 is actually dro driving this robot arm. That's pretty cool. So let's stop that. 
Uh, it can also do audio. So let's do a little uh, tune. Let's press play on this. I'm going to move my microphone across so you can hear this. There we go. And the, the clever people at uh, Pimeroni have even written a song using motors. So the motors can actually turn and make a, a tune as well. So this one's dragging slightly. So let's... There we go. Let's have a look at uh, the next thing. So we're going to now look at um, some motors. What I'm going to do now, let's load up. Uh, motor wave. Let's play this one. So we can see the motors going backwards and forwards in a really kind of smooth motion there. And I'm going to stop that. And of course, because this has got a Pico W on board, we can actually do some really cool things. So Pimroni created a library that's called Few, uh, which is a personal web hosting software. So I've created a little program, which is this uh, main.py here. Let's just uh, open up and show you what's inside there. So this one is going to host a web page and it's going to take some readings from this sensor that I have on here. So I just pull this out. This is a little breakout garden um, sensor, which is a uh, VL53L1X. And this is like a laser time of flight uh, distance sensor. I'm going to push that into the the breakout garden connector which is on the board there. I've soldered on the breakout garden connector because it comes unpopulated and you can very easily solder one in place. All right, so if I run this code now, it's going to start up its own web server. So first of all, it has to connect to my local area network. I've got a little secret.py file that's got my Wi-Fi username and password in there. And it, that means it can connect to my local area network and then start hosting a web server. OK, so this is now hosting a web server. I've connected to that using my Mac. So you can see that there's an IP address there. And I've created this little web page and it's simply getting readings for this uh, distance sensor. So if I hold my hand really close to that, you can see there that it's saying that it's about two millimeters. If I move my hand back and further and further and then closer again, you can see that it's getting real time feedback and it's updating this web page, uh, which is pretty clever. That's really, really cool. That means we can make all kinds of clever inventions. So if you feel like making things with Raspberry Pis, MicroPython and electronics, then you might like checking out my own channel, which is Kevin MacLear 28. Uh, and I recently created a project using the Inventor 2040W, which was a simple robot arm. So it's a simple 3D printable robot arm project. And you can use the Inventor 2040W to control that with little sliders using a web page. It's really, really fun. So check that one out on my channel as well. So I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.